Well, welcome to Weekly Wisdom. Uh, this week we're continuing on in chapter 10 of Proverbs. And, and we're looking at something that, that comes up again and again through the book of Proverbs. In, in wisdom literature, the topic of kind of behavior and character around our work lives comes up again and again through the book of Proverbs. So we're going to touch on this one more time. This is Proverbs 10, 4 through 5. And the contrast is, contrast is between laziness and hard work. Between cutting corners and giving things your best. So here's the passage. Proverbs chapter 10, beginning in verse 4. Lazy hands make for poverty, but diligent hands bring wealth. He who gathers crops in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps during harvest is a disgraceful son. So this one little passage, this coupling of these two verses, really looks at two aspects of how we respond to an opportunity to work, whether it's our, our school studies for school, whether it's in the workplace, whether it's around the yard at home, any opportunity to do something, whether it's creating something artistic or doing something scientific, when we have a chance to use our minds, our strength to do something, how do we come at it? And so verse four addresses the consequences. It says the lazy person will wander into poverty, but the diligent person, the hard worker, will wander into a life of wealth. They, they lead you somewhere. Now, again, remember the book of Proverbs is not a, a meant to be an absolute science. If you do this, A equals B. If you do this, this will happen. It's giving general spiritual and life realities. So generally speaking, think about it. If you're lazy, you don't make as much. And if you're diligent and work hard, you make more. P who gets the raise? Who gets advanced? Is the person who's working hard, going above and beyond, or doing their work with excellence? And they're the person that nobody wants to lose. So, so there's the consequences. But the second thing is there's a connection to character seen in verse 5. It says the hard worker is a person who is prudent, a person who is kind of guided by wisdom. That's part of who they are. They think things through and they, and they have a sense of wisdom in their choices. But it says the person who always wants a little extra sleep is the disgraceful son. They're sleeping during harvest. They're, this, they're the disgraceful child. And so, so our work is not only uh, about the consequences that come from it, but it also reveals something about our character. If you know someone and they are consistently cutting corners, consistently lazy, consistently wanting a paycheck but doing less and less work, does that reflect their character? Some of you say, well, that's not fair. That's life. <laughs> that is fair. It's fair just because the, the way someone, if you see two people doing the same job and one does all they can to get out of working and one, one does excellent work with the best skills they have, that tells you something about who they are. And so our work reveals something. I remember my son, uh, Nate and I were sitting in a restaurant years ago. He was a little guy and, uh, and there was a mom and a child. And the mom, her role was to kind of take care of that child, but she was ignoring her child and the child was just, um, lots of descripting words, but the, the, the child was a challenge. That child was out of control. And along the way, my son Nate looked at me and he asked me this question. He says, Dad, he says, why doesn't that mommy love her son? I thought it was kind of a strange question. I said, well, I said, what do you mean? And he said, well, he said, if, he, if she loved him, she wouldn't let him act that way. So if she really loved him, she wouldn't let him be out of control. The mom was abdicating her role of responsibility to raise a, a, a nice kid and to, and to at least discipline them and give some structure. And the kid was becoming exactly what you'd expect without the structure there. And so our character flows out of how we live and what we do, whether you're a mom, whether you're in law enforcement, whether you're in the military, whether you're in the arts, whatever, you, wherever you are, here's the encouragement. Give it your best. God's giving you gifts and abilities and skills. Give them back to him and do what you do with excellence, with diligence, and let God receive the glory. And you, Proverbs says, will probably receive some benefit from that. It leads to future good work. It leads to, to good pay. Those things all tie together. So give it your best, give God the glory, and whatever work you do, do it for the glory of Jesus. Will you pray with me? Living Lord Jesus, thank you that you give each of us unique gifts, and some we, we all have different gifting and different uh, energy levels and different passions, Lord. We'd, you don't expect all of us to do the same kind of work or to do it the same way. But God, you do call us to give it our best, to pour ourselves into what we do. Help us to do that. Help us to honor you by giving our best. And then as we do that, Lord, provide for us and grow our character to be more like Jesus. We pray this in his name. Amen. Well, blessings on you. Enjoy the rest of your day. As always, I encourage you, if you're part of Shoreline Church, services at 9 11 every Sunday, we'd love to see you there online or in person. And if you're part of another church, get involved, get engaged, and be part of the body of Christ. Blessings on you. Have a great day.